Welcome to the advanced tutorial for Google Sites. Here we're going to focus on creating a page template and creating a site template. And I'm actually going to walk you through um, the creation of my AP Biology students portfolio template. So I'm going to start out by creating a new site altogether. And this is also going to be a blank one. So the reason I'm considering a template this year is because in past years I've allowed my students to create their own page from scratch and it can kind of make grading difficult, particularly when you have a lot of them to go, excuse me, to go through. So creating a template still allows them some creativity. They can still tweak the theme. They can still move things around, but it gives them a basis for what you want included on that page and that basis is always there unless they delete it, which defeats the whole purpose of using a template. So hopefully they don't do that. So the first thing I want you to do is actually brainstorm about what you want included on your portfolio, or I should say on your student's portfolio. Usually on my student's homepage, I have them draw a mind map using Google Draw that just has sort of, sort of like an about me kind of thing, mostly pictures, no words, or very few words, and definitely no last names. It only has their first name and maybe their last initial. But it just kind of is about me, what am I using this for? This could be where you talk about the purpose of your portfolio. A lot of different things can go here, but I hate to see blank home pages. So before we, be, before we get, begin with a page template, um, think about what do you want them to include. For my purposes, I'm going to have them address essential questions for each unit. They're going to include an artifact, reflect on that artifact, and they're going to include some study tools like YouTube videos and other website tutorials that they found helpful. So that's basically what I'm going to include on this template. So if you need to pause and brainstorm, then please click pause on the video now. If not, let's move on. So let's start out by creating our first unit page. So I'm just going to call this unit one. And we'll leave that the way it is for now because I'm going to adjust things and do something with that in just a minute. So the things that I said were essential questions. Artifacts, artifact reflection, and actually we're going to have them repeat this for however many essential questions they have. So they're going to have, if they have three essential questions for that unit, they'll have three artifacts. Basically the goal is to show that they understand and can answer that essential question. Okay, and then they're also going to include useful study tools. Right, that's basically what I want them to include. I am going to go ahead and disable the comments and attachments portions because again, only collaborators can leave comments and I don't want them to attach things. I want them to hyperlink and embed things on their web page. So I, want to, I, I don't want them anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off. So because this is going to be basically what every single unit page looks like, I might as well create a page template and save myself the trouble of deleting those things and retyping everything in. So to do that, I'm going to go to More and Save as Page Template. Unit page is fine, or let's see, unit page, and save that. So when I go to create my Unit 2 page, then I just call it unit two. I have the unit page template selected. When I hit create, that page will look exactly like my unit one page. Now if you've added other stuff, that other stuff is gonna show up too, but since I made this a super basic um, outline of what I want them to include, then it's just fine the way it is. I'm gonna go ahead and save it because I am gonna have them include, or you know, copy and paste the essential questions and they're gonna include their own artifacts and their own reflections and things like that. And if they want to change the site layout or the page layout, they can. They can do some things like that, but at least they have included what I want them to include. So they're probably going to have about 10 pages like this. I'm not going to sit here and create all of them because I'm just not going to waste your time like that. But the other really important element that they're going to have on their portfolio is their virtual lab notebook. So I really prefer the list page for this, and this is a good way to show you a couple of the other things that they have. Um, the announcements template is kind of like a blog role. It's the only way you can really have a blog embedded on a Google site. You can't even embed Blogger, which really disappoints me. 
Um, but that's basically what that's for. A file cabinet is basically just where you dump a bunch of files. It has a lot of extraneous information. That's what I used to use for my student website or for my classroom website. But like I said, it has a lot of extraneous information that's not important. And I've since moved towards using list pages a lot more. And I kind of prefer them the most out of all of them now, especially for this purpose. So the reason I like this is because it creates a really nice table of all of your stuff. So if I scroll up a little bit, you can see the create your own one. The action items, issue list, unit status, those are more kind of business oriented and they're just boilerplate things. If you're going to create your own and adjust it a lot anyway, and just use this template. So the very first thing I want them to always include is the date of their lab and they actually have date as an option that you can choose. The next column is going to be the title of the lab that they'll just type in. I also have them type in a very, very brief, meaning two to three sentences, purpose and conclusion. That way when they go back to their virtual lab notebook later, they can remember what was the McMush lab about. It's about blending a Happy Meal in a bl blender and analyzing it for food particles. It's pretty gross. Anyway, um, after the conclusion, then I would have them link their lab report. And for that, because I want them to link their lab report, you can actually choose URL as an option. They are also going to include an artifact, which is usually a picture. Sometimes it's a graph or a poster. Kind of depends on the lab. But that's also going to be something that's linked, so I'm going to choose URL for that as well. And I want them to filter and sort everything by date. I, because it's a lab notebook, it needs to be in chronological order. So if I do this for them already, it doesn't get messed up later. So I hit Save. <clears throat> and here I'm also going to delete or disable the comments and attachments. Once again, everything's going to go in that table, so I don't need those things. So now that I have that looking the way I want, then basically once they download this as a site template, all they have to do is click add item and then they fill in the appropriate boxes. So just to show you what happens, you just fill in these fields. It's kind of like a database for you. It's pretty nice. So currently they don't have access to using this as a site template. The way to make that happen is to go to manage site and publish this site as a template. So I'm under the general tab if you're not there. So publish this site as a template. AP Biology eFolio. Um, the description here seems kind of redundant, but and I cannot type today. So if I click submit, then this website will now be available in the template gallery. So since I called it ADHS AP Bio eFolio, if I were to go to Google Sites main page, and create a new site, so let's say I'm the student this time, if I create a site and I browse the gallery, if I look for ADHS AP Bio, theoretically it should show up and there it is. So there's my brief description, and if they look at it, they can preview it, and then they have the option to use it. Okay, I'm not going to click on that because I don't want to. Um, but if you want to go the template route, that's basically what you would need to do. Um, it does require you to think a lot more about what you want included on your student portfolios, um, but hopefully that's a, a good starting point. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email me or tweet me. Um, but that's the end of the Advanced Google Sites tutorial. I'm Abby Wood. I hope that you found this helpful.